Hey, yeah, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports and News. I'm Joe Boyer. Please continue to subscribe down below to help us get to 195 or end of January. Go really appreciate all the love and support of all the subscribers thus far. But let's get right into it. The Colorado Avalanche New Year Report as we check in on the Colorado Avalanche's season this far, which is another successful 1, 9, 8, and 2 this far this season for 40 points in 29 games with only one cat on their entire defense, which is the struggle bunny part if you look at the statistics of their team. Uh, that played the entire 29 games as far, and I think that's a big reason why that's been a struggle bunny part of the statistics of their team. They haven't even had everybody play yet, or Mo, Bo Byram, excuse me, who's a big cog of their defense going forward. Barron got two games to get a cup of coffee. He's going to be a big cog of the defense going forward. Probably the guy that slots in for Ryan Murray, uh, who's going to be a big part of this year, but expires at the end of next year. So her slot right in there, because Murray's bugaboo is obviously health. Uh, he's only played in a handful of the games, 17 this year of the 29. Uh, Bo Byron's played in 15 of the 29, and Devin Taze has only played in 18 of the 29, and even McCarr's played in 25 of the 29. So obviously that's going to affect <coughs> your defense when you don't have all your guys playing in all the games, because they have a good overall defense. Devin Tays, Cal McCarr, Samuel Jarrell, Burr Byram, those are good names to have. Eric Johnson uh, playing a hell of a season this year. Ryan Murray, when he's in, is a very solid um, defensive defenseman. He, we thought uh, when he was drafted, he was going to be more of a little bit of an offensive spunk defenseman, and actually a lot more of an offensive spunk defenseman, but he became a good $2 million, like $2.5 a million, just stay at home, just do with all the things right type of defenseman, and he's doing that fine. Jack Johnson's even not playing terrible uh, for Colorado this year, and actually having a solid season for them when he's kind of just been on teams in the past few years floating around. Uh, but hasn't made as big of an impact and is making a little bit more of an impact this year, actually being a little bit steady of a veteran and being that steady veteran presence rather than just someone that's almost like a de facto player coach. It's just good to have in your locker room at that point. Uh, Valerie Nachuskin has only played in 18 games as well. Uh, he's been in and out. And then also when it comes to the minors, Megna had to play a lot of games this year, the AHL vet. Uh, Martin Couch played in six. Kiefer Shearwood played in eight. Sampo Ronto, who was drafted in 18, played in 10. So he's got uh, experience that he's going to be able to learn from and tool and be able to use those tool uh the toolage he has, excuse me, to be able to learn and grow because he had the experience of the NHL. So now he knows what tools he really has to work on. Um, and that's going to only help him. Obviously, the same thing goes for their goaltending uh, prospect, uh, Eustace Anunen, who already has had success at the AHL level, getting those two games, even though they weren't the squeakiest of clean the whole time he was up at the NHL level. He definitely had some good success, though. Um, it's going to be able to just make him an even better player, getting that cup of coffee. So that's the blessing in disguise of kind of just the awfulness of having guys go through the protocols of this year. And Colorado was one of the teams that, of course, have gone through the gauntlet. But because of that, you've seen guys like Logan O'Connor tremendously step up. You've seen Curtis Magnermate, who's a defenseman, uh, step up for them to play and kind of just be that roundhouse, old school, uh, physical type style forward uh, when they need to put him there. So everybody for Jan Bednar's team is really just fitting in and doing what they got to do. Alex Newhook is obviously only 20 years old and already showing great signs. And is going to continue to get better their 2019 uh, draft pick. Kadri, obviously, for this season, uh, this team's a cup contender big time for this year. They have guys to replace if they do end up losing because of the way his salary is going to go. Guys like uh, Nazim Kadri, like I mentioned, Sampo Ranta, who's going to be up in Morton Cout, who you would think would be up next year as well, more full time basis. Uh, those guys come to mind, um, as well as other prospects that are not in their minor leagues yet come to mind as well. But Kadri's playing a hell of a season this year. And JT Comper, great two-way forward. So this team just mixes in when their forwards core, good offensive players um, that are also good on both ends. So they're very wise, clean team with McKinnon, Ratanen, who's um, gotten better on both ends. Landis Cog, Comper, who's great on both ends. Kadri's obviously not the best defensively, but it's got better with Jan Bednar. Uh, then you have Burakovsky, who's a very good score a points producer uh, ever since he's gone to the Colorado Avalanche. And then Nicholas Albe kubel has been more word to the wise uh, with the Avalanche than he was with the Flyers and is starting to kind of adjust to play like he did in the first year with AV where he was a good efficient four checker 
and back checker and not being as kind of just dumb in the course of the game, taking stupid penalties. So this team, as long as their goaltending can keep trending the way it's going, Kemper got off to a slower start. Obviously, they had Gruby doing really well. He goes on to the crack, and Kemper comes in here, gets off to a little bit of a slower start with his new team because he had to adjust to the new team. I think that also plays into the defensive stats not being as good and also them having, he only played in 21 of the 29 games. Francois played in one, having different goaltending uh, play during the course of the a season as well as Johansson while he was there struggle um that factors into the defensive stats as well so I don't think their defense is really what it shows that's where the stats can be deceiving I don't think their defense is as poor as the stats have really shown this far because I think they actually have a good defense but if you look at it statistically um the, their numbers per team defense in terms of goals allowed are 23rd and their penalty kills all the way at 28th, so that doesn't spell well. So, yeah, you want to get that penalty kill going more, but I think having just guys like Murray play more, guys like uh, Byron play more, guys like Taze continue to be in the lineup more and not be out for seven to more uh, games, that's going to make a huge impact as these guys stay steady in the lineup because it already has been making a huge impact for the Colorado Avalanche as the closing point of this video because in their last 10, they're 8-1-1. One, one. So this team's showing that they are a cup-contending team as long as everything goes right, and obviously, one thing they can't control, because they've been going through the injuries as well, the COVID protocols go right for them, because that's just something every team is dealing with, as they've got through it a lot better than some, but obviously, that's something, if you see how it affects them going forward, that's why, injuries-wise, uh, they've had to have certain guys like McNamee and COVID protocols rise, play forward, and move defensemen into positions they wouldn't normally play in the forward court. But I hope everybody enjoyed this check-in on the Colorado Avalanche, the new year. I'm looking to the Colorado Avalanche, who again with Jan Bednar are a very good competitive team that are going to be a cup contender yet again. Uh, even though they went through a little bit of their bumps in the road, they have a younger team with the Alex Newhooks of the world in the lineup steadily this year. With the um, Bo Byrons in the lineup steadily this year. Uh, so they're getting, they're adjusting a little bit, and they also haven't had guys in the lineup for all of their games for mo the most part this year. McKinnon's also only played 19 games, so that makes a big impact, obviously, to the team. Now they're coming back, and now they're really pouncing. Hopefully that continues for the Avalanche, because they're a very fun team to watch. Stay safe out there, everybody. Enjoy the hockey. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget. Have a fun rest of the season, Avalanche fans.